Okay, great. Great. Well, I get started. Now, just another check. Everybody on the call either is on WebEx or we have the PowerPoint on its way to you. Am I right? Super. So those okay, I have, this, is, this is Julie, and I have not received the PowerPoint yet. Okay. It's on its way. Okay. All right. Um, so those of you that are on WebEx can see who else is on. Um, great group from the Southwest Cluster. Let me tell you who's on um, and what our team, our team and, and the different roles that we represent today and the roles that we will be and the functions that we will be fulfilling as we move into the launch of My America. Um, I'm Justine Murray and am with the, the um, E Grants Coaching Unit, and Liz is with me. Liz Moore is with me this morning as well. We are both with um, Aguirre, JBS Aguirre, and have been working on developing this material. Amy Hetrick um, is an AmeriCorps National Program Officer who has been working with us to try and um, figure out how the system works and to to develop materials that we hope are going to help you um, manage this transition as smoothly as possible. Um, I need to make, a, we, we are not the developers. We haven't been involved in the development of the system, any of us, but has been involved in creating the materials and will be involved as we go on through the launch in providing you the training and technical assistance that all of us working together can figure out how to make this system work for you and the transition be smooth. Also on the call is Courtney Wilson, an AmeriCorps State Program Officer, and Susan Schechter from um, CNCS OLDT. Are there others from CNCS that I've missed? The program officers will be available for you for questions about compliance issues as you go as we go through the transition, and we from our end will be available for functionality issues as we go through the transition. So let's get started. Um, if we can, yeah, great. The idea of today is that we wanted to give you at the commission level an understanding, a kind of a brief overview of the system and also an understanding of the user roles and functionalities that are going to be involved so that as you think about and plan for the launch, um, you'll be able to think about if there are any business practices that you want to change and or how you're going to include your subs and the kind of information you're going to want to give them about particular user role and functionality there. I think you all received a note um, sort of toward the end of, or the, yeah, maybe the end of last week, the beginning of this week, that is from CNCS indicating that they're expecting to launch um, My AmeriCorps the last week in July, and it seems to to us that that's pretty much on target, that that's still pretty much a date that we can all look toward. There isn't a definite date yet, but the last week in July is what's looking like it's good. So the agenda for today is going to be an overview of the system, a brief overview of the system, and then um, a little more in-depth look at user role functionality, um, some ideas for you in terms of as you prepare for the launch, we're going to end up talking about the resources and training that will be available, and of course we'll end with a to-do list for you and some suggestions that you might think about as we go on from here. If you have questions as we're going along, please ask them at that time. Um, if, if we need to move along, I'll say that, but don't feel like you need to hold your questions. Okay, any questions so far? Great. All right, well let's look at a brief overview of the system. Many of you might know that um, My AmeriCorps portal is already in function, and what's currently available to the members and NCNCS staff as well as the grantees, uh, you can see listed here. Members are able to, to update their contact information. They're able to pretty much manage what they need to manage through the trust to take care of their taxes and the payments and the college forms and those kinds of things. 
They're also able as a member to begin the recruitment process online with the application, um, being, being able to search for possibilities for service and to get the application started. You, as a grantee, at this point are able to list your, your service opportunities and access applicant information, visit and approve applications, and review references in the submitted application. Um, CNCS staff is able to view the application. So that's what's currently available in my AmeriCorps. Now, at the end of July, when we have the, the um, next launch, what you'll be able to do is, next screen, you'll be able to have much more functionality will be available for you in terms of member management and program management. And we're going to talk a little bit in more, a bit more detail about that as we go through, but you'll be able to search for programs, send invitations to applicants, monitor, you'll be able to enroll members online, um, monitor enrollments and status changes, view and manage slots, and then you'll, be, you'll have a certain access to programs too. So one other way of looking at that is a bit more visual. Um, don't be, um, let's see, don't assume that that single arrow there is really descriptive of how the system is going, is, is going to work. There are going to be many more arrows back and forth along the way. But when, after this one is launched, what members will be able to do is register, search for service opportunities, apply for service, submit their forms, um, accept or reject invitations, enroll, they can start the enrollment. They cannot enroll on their own. That's the enrollment process is really the program side. They'll be able to serve, complete service, exit, and then have access to alumni services. You as CNCS staff and your program staff, your subgrantee staff, will register, create service opportunities, recruit, accept applicants, submit service offers, enroll and place members, create and approve changes in service, exit members, and provide member and program, and program oversight. So in a nutshell, that's an overview of the functionality that are going to be available to you um, after the launch in July. Any questions? Justine, this is Patricia. I'm a little confused about um, what the commission staff can do. I understand what the program staff can do, and I understand what CNCS staff can do. Can commission staff do everything that yes. we're seeing for the program and CNCS staff users? Yes. Yes, you can, depending upon the role that you have. So, Patricia, that's a great segue into the next slide. And now we're going to really start looking at, unless there are other questions that we want to come back, but we're really going to start looking at now the roles and the functionalities through the role. And I think this is going to begin to answer your question, Patricia. If not, we'll come back to it in a bit, okay? Great. So Liz, you're on. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everyone. Um, so we are looking at the user roles for My AmeriCorps. The first user role that we will be looking at is the grantee administrator role. Now, um, most of you should be very familiar with this role because it's actually a user role in eGrants that gives full access to the My AmeriCorps functionality. So if you have this role at your state commission, you will have full functionality for both the grants as well as my AmeriCorps. Um, so there are grantee admins um, at the state commission level, and you will have access to all your grants operating sites, which um, are actually the sub-grantees or programs, as well as the service locations. And um, there are also uh, grantee administrators at the state program level because they are a, a legal applicant organization. Okay, so they would only have full access to their grants, meaning their operating sites as well as their service locations. So they would never have access to the prime information. Um, you'll be able to approve all requests. Um, however, we, we do recommend to programs to contact their um, state commission program officer for guidance on business practices. 
and they can also manage organizational information and all other users. So this role is in charge of assigning as well as deactivating user roles and access levels. Any questions before we go on to introducing the two My Miracle user roles and, and defining them? Okay. Um, actually, at this point, I'd like to view this in a different format and share with you the actual PowerPoint um, slide. So your screen's going to change. <laughs> Don't yeah, panic. Your, your screen will change. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do a, a quick um, flow chart for My Miracle user roles and access. So basically, the grantee admin will assign a My Miracle user role. And these two roles are the grantee recruiter and grantee member management. The grantee recruiter has most um, recruitment management functionality, with the exception of enrollment. Um, and they'll be able to create service opportunity listings and process applications uh, for all the grants to the legal applicant organization. The grantee member management user will be able to manage their program and member information. However, this role requires an additional level of access. And access is defined as prime, operating site, and service location. And we'll define this uh, momentarily, but first I'd like to go over a little more on the, um, the grantee recruiter and grantee member management user role. As I mentioned before, um, the, the grantee recruiter will be able to manage most recruitment functionalities, such as create service listings and process applications, with the exception of enrollment, which is a member management um, responsibility. The grantee member management will be able to uh, do things such as enroll members, exit member, um, manage change of status for members, lots. Okay, and now this really depends on what level of access that they have. Right. Um, as, as we mentioned before, the grantee member management requires an additional level of access. Without this level of access, this person will not be able to see or do anything when they log on to My AmeriCorps. Okay, so let's define the levels of access. <coughs> Uh, again, the level of access is referred to as the prime operating site and service location. The prime is actually a grant to the state commission. The operating site is the um, program, or uh, a, you know, in the program's context, it's actually their grant. And the service location, you can think of it as a, um, a physical location, as an exact location where a member serves, or as an authority level. Okay, so the service location um, will only be able to create forms, but not approve them, um, and they also will not be able to manage slots. And as you can see from this tree diagram, um, the prime uh, is linked to the operating sites, which are linked to the service location. So basically, um, a user at the state commission level will be able to be assigned one specific grant or several grants. And all the operating sites, as well as service locations associated with that grant or those grants will automatically be added to that user's profile. Um, that's sort of the data association. It's um, up to down. Uh, and it's never down to up. So 
So, uh, for example, a service location user will never have access to an operating site or prime information. Questions? Any questions? So, Patricia, to just reiterate, in terms of your first question, in terms of what the State Commission staff can do, as the grantee administrator, you can do everything throughout your, for, for all of the operating sites and the service locations that they might set up. You can also, in your office, assign a, a member management role at the prime level to certain grants, and they then would be able to, to have all of the functionality um, available for those operating sites and the service locations. The operating sites can also, will also have, and these are your subs, these are your subs. So your subs will also have a grantee administrator that can do everything for their grant, and they also will be able to assign people at their level as the member management role at the operating site level, and that person then will also be able to manage the members and manage the slots. So they can do slot conversions, they can, um, enroll and exit members, um, they, they can perform all of the functionality that the system has. Does like that to make uh, sense to people? Oh, go ahead, Amy, sorry. Um, and if you're uncomfortable with a user having all of that authority, um, the option is to assign them, regardless of where they actually work, um, assign them at the service location level. So in other words, someone who actually works at your commission, you want them to be able to do data entry or whatever but not approve things, they can be assigned at the service location level even though they're working at the prime. Right. Right. And the same thing with the operating, your, your subgrantee staff, they can do the same thing. Questions? Is that all making sense? Just think, um, when you just said that we could give an operating site the role at prime level, is that what you just said? No, I'm sorry, okay. you cannot. The okay, only that's what I wanted to hear, yeah. okay. And yeah. do we, as the prime at the commission level, have to give the authority to the operating sites? Or no. is that part of their grant process, they automatically get that? Well, what they will automatically get, each of your subs will automatically have an admin administrator role. Okay. Because they are a legal applicant in the right. grant. Uh -huh. So, and it's that admin administrator at your sub site that will um, give the roles the, and the functionality and the access to the people in their program that they want to provide that to. Fabulous. Thank you. you I think it might be admin. important. I'm sorry. It you might be important. Go ahead, Amy. I'll shut up. You're, you're on. <laughs> um, because there are grantee admins at the operating site level who can do everything, have all the access to all the functionality in the system, um, as commissions, you, sh you might want to think through any kind of business practices that you want to set up um, if you're uncomfortable with them being able to do things like um, convert slots without your approval in the system. But that would be a policy that we'd set outside of the system? That's right. Yes. yes. That would be a policy or a practice that you would set up as a commission with your subs outside of the system because they will have the functionality and be able to do it. And how long will they have that functionality? Forever. When, well, I'm assuming when the grant ends? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. But right. that, again, won't be something within the commission's ability. That will be an e-grants function. Yes. And notice here, too, that CNCS is no, will no longer have a role in approving plot conversions and things like that. The other thing that we should mention is that there will not be um, email notifications when um, slots are converted or members are enrolled or the kinds of things that you might as a com at a commission level be interested in.
so you'll want to have your own business practices for monitoring to make sure that you are aware of what's going on at the operating sites or at your program and sub grantee level. So sometimes, I'm just going to throw this out, and sometimes we would like a, a sub to stop recruiting because we feel it's too late in the year, or right. we're concerned that they don't have enough money in their budget to actually pay the living allowance. Right. This we have no control over, except as a business practice or policy that we would develop outside. That's correct. And actually, in the system, they can also change their member enrollment periods. As without as a, without, without yes. commission approval? Yes. Okay. Is there anything? Um, as long as it's within the budget period. Okay. So would there be, what, what kinds of things would the commission have to approve or get notice? I guess we wouldn't get notice of anything, huh? That's right. There's no approval built in. Okay. And I except that where there's approval built in is from the somebody who has access at the surface location site because they cannot, they can only okay. um, develop the forms. Right. Other than that, there is from the operating site, the operating site approves um, and the prime approves within the within the rolling function. But there's no up approval, if you will. Okay. The grantee admins at the operating site level have equal authority in the system to grantee admins at the prime. And again, it's up to the grantee to determine who the grantee admin is at the sub-grantee right. level. That's right. We have and no control over that. That's right. Because okay. they do that when they come into eGrant. Right. So I think remember that eGrants is your gateway into the portal. So that that's how this all happens. Is that grantee in that admin from their eGrants account is also the grantee in admin in their portal account. Mm -hmm. It's not a portal account. It's just the gateway. Sorry, wrong language. So basically, we at the commission level, we're not, we're not doing anything. We're just looking. We're just looking around and seeing what what the subs are doing. But we have no control over who gets named as a grantee administrator or any of the f things that they do within their programs in terms of, you know, outside of written policies. But what they do, any grants, we have no control over. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. Any other questions about this? Okay. Good. Let's look at the, the map. Okay. Um. So this is a snapshot of the user role map. Um, this is an Excel spreadsheet that is available right now on the Resource Center website for downloading. Um, this will give you sort of a quick reference of the user roles um, on the top row and then the actions that they can perform on the left column. All right. Any other questions about this, about user roles? Again, this is an overview, and we'll get into how you can get more information about this. Um, let's look now at, and we've, we've sort of covered these, but just to focus on the important considerations, the things that you all will want to keep in mind. For those of you that are following along on your own, um, on your paper copy of the, of the PowerPoint, we're on, we're on PowerPoint 12. So the tr uh, as we've just said, My AmeriCorps also does not include a compre comprehensive compliance check. Um, and that you're going to need to set your own policies about system use and then monitor the usage for compliance. If you have questions about compliance, issues as related to um, the system, please contact your program officer. If you have com questions about the functionality of the system and how the system works, you can contact us at the training at the eGrants Coaching Unit, and our training will focus on the functionality of the system. And we'll give you those, those resource, I mean, you know, those contact numbers at the very end. So now we've sort of covered an overview of user roles 
and kind of given you an idea of what the roles are and what the different access levels are that you're going to be thinking about. Now what we wanted to do was give you just a few, a little idea of what the screenshots are going to look like. And this might also raise some of the, or answer some questions for you. So you're on, Liz. Thank you. Um, the first screenshot that we're going to look at is the work basket screenshot. Um, and who has access to work baskets? Um, work baskets are basically pending items and that are waiting for approval. So that means that this person will have, would need to have approval um, capability. So the grantee member management at the prime level as well as the operating site would have this um, view, as well as the grantee admin. Okay. The grantee recruiter will have their own work baskets, but um, theirs is only for pending applications and service listings. Um, over here, you can see that there's pending applications, invitations, uh, enrollment, as well as uh, status change and site visits. Good. Okay. Move on to the next one. The next one we're looking at is the member search um, page. And you can search for the member by the program year. Here. Um, program name, service location, the program code or the grant ID, the member ID or the NSP ID, or by their name and date of birth. Great. Okay. Move on to the uh, pending exit work basket. Just a, a, a general overview of the uh, pending ex exit um, work basket. You'll see the member's name, the program name, uh, if this is service location, uh, if this member is attached to a service location, the expected completion date, uh, their status, and if they have um, completed their exit form. The program can also complete the exit form on behalf of the member. Okay, let's move on to the next screenshot, which is the reporting one. Um, you can see that there is a list of about a dozen reports here um, that you can run. Um, this is a good way to monitor your program. Um, this pulls up data for you at, in, in a snapshot. And um, you can run it in um, several formats, such as CDS, um, HTM, Excel, or PDF. It's a good monitoring tool. Any questions? I just wanted to ask a question on the last one, on the work basket. For the exits, is it possible at the commission level, when I see the exit form, is it possible to tell, to actually see the exit form so we can see whether the member got an award or didn't get an award? Yes, you will be able to see the exit form. Okay, thanks. You'll be able to see everything your programs can see. That's that. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? With this um, part, I would yes, like to sorry. make a, a comment before we move on. Yeah. Um, I know that we talked a little bit about, you know, that you're going to need to monitor. Um, the, the work basket is a really good way to, to check back regularly to see what's going on. Um, there are also other kinds of tools um, under program management where you can look and see, you know, check in regularly on what the slots are for each program, things like that. So even though you're not getting notifications, there are pretty simple ways for you to always know what, what's happening. Right. Good. Thanks, Amy. It's just that when I look at this work basket and we're assuming that this is the pending exits that are open, I'm not able to tell from the exit form status whether they completed or not. I just am able to tell that it was submitted. That's right. And what you would be able to do is run, you can run a search under the member or click on their name oh, you know, once see. it has been submitted, and then you'll be able to see all the information there. I see. Thank you. Hi, this is Veronica from Missouri. 
Hi, Veronica. Hi. Um, I'm not seeing anything that looks like there's a timesheet function here. Is that still not something that we're going to see in the portal? That's right. There is not a timesheet function in the portal. Okay. The, the only place where uh, the number of hours are recorded is on the exit form, and they okay. are then recorded there and verified by the staff member completing that form. Okay. And then are you going to talk at all about Weber's during this presentation and what's going to happen with Weber's? Yes. Perfect segue. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, oh, you're, you're, you're very good. Well, if there are no other questions on those, we, what we wanted to do was give you just a sample of the screenshots and how they're going to look. Know that that's a brief sample. When we get into the actual training, you'll have the opportunity to see, um, see it in, in much greater detail. So let's move on to in preparation for the launch in relation to Weber's. Um, here are some things to just keep in mind, and that is that enrollment, exit, or change of status, or term actions that if they're in pending status in, in Weber's will not transfer to My AmeriCorps. The information that will, try, will transfer to My AmeriCorps are those um, actions that you have completed in Weber's, and they then will transfer. So there will be additional information coming from CNCS in terms of deadlines for completing the actions in Weber's. But one of the things that you could be doing right now is for sure keeping up on the, the daily actions, making sure that there's as little in the pending column as possible so that the exits are confirmed, the, the enrollments are, are done, any change of status, nothing is pending. And then you can also begin to look back and see if there's anything that, that has been outstanding out there that you would like to complete before the transfer. Again, guidance will be coming with relation to deadlines. And just to note, Weber's will be available in read-only mode for a specified time after the launch. Did that answer your question, Veronica? Yes, Jess, thank you. Justine, this is Melinda. Um, I know that Weber's will be read-only for a while, but would it be until the end of those closeout for those grants? You know, I honestly don't know, Melinda, but I'll put that down as a question. Amy, do you know? <laughs> Guidance will be coming soon. Guidance coming soon. And if, uh, is there a way we could obtain a read-only copy from the Weber's development team? Because we don't want to go in and print out all of our FSRs and PERs and financial information if we don't have to, if we can mm -hmm. still have access to just looking okay. at it. Okay. I will I will be um, sharing that kind of feedback. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else on this one? Of things? Yeah. Actually, it would be, this is a place where it might be helpful if programs or commissions described what they would be needing Weber's data for and for how long. Maybe send some emails um, or whatever because that's the kind of stuff we don't have a view in headquarters when we're making decisions about how long to, to leave it read only. So if folks could send Amy a few, or Justine a few, an email about how long it would be useful for you to have Weber's and what you'd be needing it for. That would help us understand that better. Please do this today. Could, mm -hmm. uh, what is Amy's email? My email uh, is A-H-E-T-R-I-C-K at CNS.gov. I know a decision is, is coming very soon, so um, it, it's a timely, a timely yeah, thing. Yeah, that, well, that's great. So if you could get it into Amy today, that would be good. Right. So again, how long you would like it read only and and what you would use it for as it's in the read only mode. Okay. Good. Thanks, Susan. Okay, so let's look at the resources that are going to be available for you. Um first of all there's a there's a page currently um that we'll show you in just a minute, but it's on the resource center. Available for you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Before I go into that, let me stop just a minute and describe how we're looking at the materials. 
we're looking at two different sorts of ways of getting you the information you need. One is through a tutorial, and that will be posted on the um, on the resource center, and you'll be you and your subs will be able to go in and download that at any point and look at it. And it all, the tutorials are also built in a way that you can access the information that you need around the area that you're concerned about without having to look at the whole tutorial. We are also going to be um, offering web-based sessions. The, the information at each in each will be the same. Uh, we're also going to be offering the web-based or webinar sessions, and that's the place where you can come um, to go over the information and if you have questions, and then that's also the chance to do kind of what we've done this morning, have the questions answered. So those are the two main ways in which the information is going to be available for you and your subs. So available right now on the Resource Center is the general overview of My AmeriCorps and um, a tutorial on how to create and manage an eGrants account. That's up because, as you can see, everybody who is going to have access to the, to the portal needs to have an eGrants account. So if you need people to develop an account, that will show them how. There will also be a tutorial on user role and management. That's going to be posted no later than the beginning of next week. And as Liz said, the user role map, which we just gave you a screenshot um, of, is available now. So you can go in and pull that down at this point. One month prior to lunch, so if the lunch is the end of July, then the end of June, there will be a website available for you to register for um, the webinars. And we'll be sure and let you know when that's available and when that goes live. The webinars that you'll be registering for are, next slide please. <laughs> um, the first one will be um, a webinar on user role and management. And we strongly recommend that you attend to that and that you consider attending that with your subs. Because then you'll all hear the same information at the same time and immediately following that you can talk about the business practices that you as a commission and you as the grantor are going to put in place as, as this system is launched. That will happen. Those webinars will be available two weeks prior to the launch. At that same time, we will post the tutorials for member management, program management, recruitment and enrollment, and then also a tutorial on reporting. At the launch, we will then begin a series of webinars that will last probably about two and a half weeks uh, covering those topics of member management, program management, and recruitment and enrollment. Questions about any of that? Okay, great. So, to put on your to-do list, since I know you don't have anything else to do right now, um, to discuss and assign user roles and management responsibilities, begin to noodle around about how you want to manage this transition and also how you want to think about user roles and functionality. Really stay on top of the Weber's work that as it's coming down so you don't have a lot of catch-up to do. If you have questions, again, related to compliance, please, and the, within the system, contact your program officer. If you have questions related to functionality, you can contact us at the eGrants Coaching Unit. And I think we're going to show you that um, page, right, Liz? Yes, and here it is. This is the um, My AmeriCorps Training and U User Support Resources page on the Resource Center website. Does everyone see the page? Mm -hmm. Does anyone not yep. see the page? <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, you just want to scroll down and click on to the logo on top of the um, on top of my or AmeriCorps page, and you'll see additional information: um, the webinar calendar, um, tutorials. As Christine mentioned, the My AmeriCorps Overview and Create and Manage an Events Account, those tutorials are up right now. Um, the User Role Map. And then the, um, the PowerPoint for the um, Create and Manage an Events Account. 
and my AmeriCorps overview for some reason is way down here. Yeah, Liz, and we've got it down here for members. I know we've sent in uh, the correction. It's mm -hmm. That is not my AmeriCorps overview for members. That's my AmeriCorps okay. overview for you all. I see. That's why it's, it's down there. Okay. Um, so that correction has been sent in. I just right. check to make sure that we have it. Okay. Any questions for the website? Okay. So I, I just clicked on the webinar training calendar. Mm -hmm. and, and actual dates and times come up? Yes. So those are real? I could those are real. I mean, the, you can't register for those yet. No, but those you can book them. I mean, your calendar, you can put them on your calendar? <laughs> yes. Those are real if the launch is at the end of July. So at, for right now, with the launch scheduled for the end of July, those are real. If for any reason the launch gets delayed, then we would also delay these trainings. Because we want yes. to we want them close to the launch and then right at the launch. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's there and you can certainly put them on your calendar. And then we'll tell you as soon as the registration is open so that you can go in and register for them. Um, okay, so here's here's who to contact. Again, your program officer for policy and compliance questions and, and the resource center we just went through. And then if you have questions related to functionality um, and or how to make this, how the training plan is going to work, give us a call at the eGrants Coaching Unit. Okay, any questions, comments? Jesse, this is Melinda. How can we make sure we're on the email list where we get everything concerning the My AmeriCorps portal? Because sometimes I think our EDs are on there, but we're not on there. Oh, that's a good point, Melinda. Um, okay, let me check that. Thanks. Amy, mm -hmm. Susan, you and I can work on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We'll, we'll have a look at that and see what we can do. Thanks. Thanks. Any other comments? questions? Well, we'd love you to fill out an evaluation, which is coming your way to your screen right now. Does everyone see this uh, evaluation form? It's an online form. Yes. Okay, thank you. If, once you've completed it, you can click on the submit button. The form will actually automatically reset for people who are sharing a computer. If you're not sharing a, compu uh, a computer, please disregard it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you all for joining us at this hour of the morning on a Wednesday. Will we see any of you in San Francisco? Yes. Melinda, Oklahoma. Good. Okay, Oklahoma. Good. Look forward to seeing all of you. Are we done? We are done. I was saying thanks for coming. Nobody's saying goodbye. I don't know whether they hang up. Okay, yes. Thank you very much for joining us. We are done. <laughs> you may know, and now close up your WebEx as soon as you've sent the evaluations and and um, get on about your day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye.